Good morning. Welcome to Bible. This is lesson 163 um, for Bible. And so it's Thursday. So the rest of the lessons, most of the rest of the lessons should be lesson 164. Um, but Bible is one that we're, um, we're, well, we're not behind on, but uh, the lesson number didn't ca quite catch up with everything. So um, we're just going to push on to the end with that and um, that may be a different, may jump lesson numbers next week. So don't worry about that. We'll just um, be, make sure that we're on, we get everything in. But um, first of all, Max needs to update our days. So it was seven. I went ahead and erased it. So we need to know what the next one is. So. How many days left do we have? Does anybody know how many days left we have of actual school? Well, Max, what is your guess today? 12? You keep going up. The number's supposed to go down. What is? Okay. One. Oh, Max says we have one day left. <laughs> Sorry, Max, we have a few more than that. So let's see, we had seven. So then seven minus one, oh, six. Okay, good. So Max is gonna write six for us. All right. Max wrote six for us and we're going to keep the six up there all day long for our classes, okay? All right. So this morning we are looking again more at David, of course, um, as we're going to be finishing up with him through the rest of the year. But first of all, let's take a look at our Bible verses, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And after that, we will um, review uh, Psalm 19, 7 through 14. Okay, so... Um, start thinking about that but we're going to say these verses three times um, and then we'll uh, say psalm 19 7 through 14 just one time okay all right first peter 1 18 and 19 for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received from tra by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot first peter 1 18 and 19 for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And then Psalm 19, Psalm 19, 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. Very good. All right. I hope you are have remembered those some of those verses we've learned hopefully you remember all of them you know hiding god's word in our heart is very important to uh you know the bible says that that the verse that um thy word have i hid in mine heart that i might not sin against thee when we hide god's word in our hearts when we let that become a part of us then uh we don't want to sin against God and it keeps us from sin. Um, something that, that I heard years ago and I don't know where it originates, but um, 
this book, the Bible, this book will keep you from sin and sin will keep you from this book. And so when we are sinning, we don't want to be reading the word of God. But when we're reading the word of God, we don't want to be sinning. And so the same is true both directions. And so just wanted to give you that encouragement that um, memorizing the scriptures, the, the, the Bible, and, and studying it and learning it every day um, helps us not to sin, helps us not to want to sin, and God can help us um, to overcome, to have victory over that sin. And so um, today we are going to be looking at David and Mephibosheth. And so some of you have known this story, but um, listen up and maybe you'll learn something different from it this time. So last time we talked about David bringing the ark back um, to the tabernacle. What happened when they first attempted to bring it? What happened when they first attempted to bring it back? Remember, Uzzah died trying to steady it on the cart. He went, he touched it. He had disobeyed. Um, and then a little bit later in the story, who was mad at David for dancing in the street? Who was mad at David for dancing in the street? His wife, Michael, remember? Um, the son, uh, or the daughter of Saul, I'm sorry, Saul's daughter. And so she was upset. She was embarrassed over him. All right, now David has established um, has been established as king over Israel. He remembers his promise that he made to Jonathan, his best friend. Let's look at, we're going to be in 2 Samuel 9. And so if you want to um, open up your Bible and follow along, I'm going to be reading most, actually, I'll be reading all of the chapter, but not all at once. So we're going to be looking at this chapter today. So it says in chapter uh, nine one it says, and David said, "Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake?" And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, "Art thou Ziba?" And he said, "Thy servant is he." Okay, so <clears throat> David is remembering his promise to, to Jonathan. And so he, he asks, if there's anyone from Saul's house that he can show kindness to. Let's look back in 2 Samuel um, 4.4. 4. Um, just a few chapters back. Um, so this will be the only one that we move back, for, go away from 2 Samuel 9. But uh, instead of ignoring the promise that he made because Jonathan was gone, and really, Jonathan would have been the only one that would have known if he kept the promise, except for God. Um, but instead of ignoring it, he, he asked if there was any family of Saul and Jonathan left that he could show kindness to because he knew that his promise meant something. His word meant something. And, and a promise like that wasn't one that he had made lightly and so he wasn't going to just throw it away and just forget about it um, just because hard things came about john david was still still willing to to show kindness um so back in in second samuel 4 4 this is the first mention of mephibosheth in the in the bible so let's read this and jonathan saul's son had a son that was lame of his feet he was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Okay, so the first mention is when he was five years old. And that was when his father, Jonathan, and his grandfather, Saul, died in battle. He was five. And his, his nurse, his, his um, caretaker, was carrying him out, and, and she, um, she may have dropped him, or she may have fallen too. Um, however it happened, he, he fell in such a way that it, it damaged his feet. The Bible says that he became lame, which means that he was paralyzed, which means that the... Um, uh, you may remember from our health that we talked about, um, I think it was fourth grade health, but sixth grade may have talked about it too. But when 
there was probably damage. Maybe he broke his legs. He probably broke his legs. And there was probably damage to the nerves. And so then his legs didn't work any, any longer. And so we, we find him and he's a young man and, and he's, um, he's probably had to get along without um, being able to walk or maybe, maybe he could walk some, but not walk very well and, and needed some help. Um, and so, you know, Mephibosheth is, is probably um, as, as part of the, the king, king's family, the former king's family, he would have been um, in hiding over um, this. And so if, if we, um, when we take the verse back in chapter four, the chap chapter four was about Ishbosheth and how he had been killed. Well, the it shows that Mephibosheth lived with or near Ishbosheth, and so um, the they would have he would have been close to family, but then Ishbosheth died, and so then they would have taken Mephibosheth into hiding because they would have thought that something was going to happen to him. And so, um, but once, once that happened, um, he was, he was in hiding while well, there was the man named Ziba, as we saw in verse two, that he was a servant of Saul's and he came forward to tell David about Mephibosheth. So um, let's look on in there. So verse three, and the king said, is there yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he's in the house of Maker, and the son of Amiel and Lodabar. Um, and so David finds out where he is. And, you know, many would have thought that David wanted to ensure that none of Saul's family would live and take the throne away from him. But he did just the opposite. He wasn't trying to get rid of all of Saul's family. He, was, he saw an opportunity to show the kindness and mercy of God to his best friend, Jonathan, by, by showing it to his son. And so then in verse five, then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. Um, so when Mephibosheth heard that the king wanted to see him, he was terrified. Um, he was lame on his feet and probably thought he wouldn't be of much use to King David. He also probably in the back of his mind was thinking, this is it. This is the end for me. Um, and so that was, that was what he was thinking. But David assured him, um, and we see this in verse 7, that he assured him that he wasn't out to harm him. And so verse 7, and David said unto him, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. And I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Basically, David is saying, I'm going to give you back everything that was that Saul owned. So it would have been his family's land that <clears throat> probably had been taken over by others um, now that Saul and Jonathan were, were gone. So he, he's saying, I'm going to give you back all this land and I want you to come and eat at my table every day all the time. Um, and that was a big deal. It wasn't just like, okay, a family dinner once a week. Um, it was, you have a place at my table for the rest of your life. I, I want to get to know you. I want to show you more kindness. David wasn't just easing his conscience for a promise that he had made. He was actually showing a true, genuine love for Mephibosheth and wanting to have that 
a full relationship with him. He just didn't want to have um, just a, a casual friendship. He just wanted, he wanted to get to know him and probably tell him stories about his father, probably um, share things about how David and Jonathan were, were friends. I mean, there were many things that, John, that David would be able to share with him even some things about Saul and, and, and not to put Saul down, but to share the good things about Saul. And yeah, Saul wasn't, wasn't the kindest to David, but David would want Mephibosheth to think highly of his grandfather and his father and, and, you know, to, to lift them up. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, he, he explained all of this to, to Mephibosheth and then he assigned Ziba to take care of the land. And so we're going to look at that. Then the uh, verse nine, then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto the master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore, you Ziba, and your sons, thy sons and thy servants, shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's sons may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, that Thy master's son shall eat bread all the way at my table. He says, I want you to, you and your sons and your servants to take care of this land so that the, the other, um, so that thy, thy master son, we're going to see who that is, has, has food to eat, that you will take care of this, of the family. And um, it says, now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So he wasn't asking for, you know, Ziba and two sons and two servants to take care of all this land. No, there were 15 sons and 20 servants. And this, so they were able to divide the work evenly. Um, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwell in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. And so David was true to his word and, and carried out everything that he promised Mephibosheth and everything that he had promised Jonathan that he would do, that he would show kindness, that he would take care of his family. And, and that shows just that, that character of David, that he kept his promise. He, his word was, was like a bond to him. It was, that was, when he said something, it wasn't just, flippantly where oh yeah I promise I'll do that I, I promise I'll clean my room oh well I forgot <laughs> you know and 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 yes there are times that we forget things but when we make a promise especially a promise to someone else that that we're going to do something then we need to follow through with that we need to to do that and that's what David is showing through his his remembering of Mephibosheth remembering of of Jonathan and everything that he had promised he's showing that when he made a promise he wasn't just just saying something to appease Jonathan and he wasn't just fulfilling this promise to appease his conscience to 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 give him make him able to sleep at night no he was he was truly wanting to show the kindness and the love of God to Mephibosheth because God had shown him that sort of love and kindness and David wasn't, wasn't going to take that for granted. He wasn't just going to take that lightly. And so that's Mephibosheth and David and how, how David was true to his word and, and showed that kindness to him. And so we are, you know, we can learn a lot through David and through Mephibosheth um, and how, how God can use even 
even the most rough circumstances like this um, and bring good out of it. And so this was something that um, I'm sure as Mephibosheth got to know David more, he became like a friend, like similar to how Jonathan and David were. I'm sure Mephibosheth was like that for um, David and David was like that for Mephibosheth. Um, so um, we are, I'm going to close in a word of prayer and then I'll let you get on to your classes. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your love for us. And Lord, thank you that you are in complete control over everything. And thank you for the story of David and Mephibosheth and how David kept his promise to Jonathan and how he showed kindness to Mephibosheth and all his household. And um, Lord, help us to remember um, to show kindness to others. And Lord, if we make a promise, help us to keep it, help us to remember and not to just forget. I pray that you would be with my students as they take, as they do their classes today, um, help them to do their best. And I know fourth grade has a language test. Give them um, remembrance of what they studied, help them to do their best and that you would be with any other tests or quizzes today um, that they would do their best as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson.